Thanks everyone for logging in today and joining us for today's webinar on the Masters of Business Analytics. I'll start off by introducing myself. I'm Natalie Ceres-Rafil and I'm the Admissions and Recruitment Manager uh, for, at the Business School. I oversee the Masters in Business Analytics program. And joined with me today, I have some of our very talented Amban alumni who are working in the field of business analytics. And they're coming from a range of different backgrounds and industries. We've got with us Krish Kohli, joining us from Vancouver's Tech Center. We've got Mitch Narva from the communications industry. We've got Tua Wong Sang Garun Sri, from the mining industry, and we've got Adnan Bank from healthcare. And last but not least, we've got with us Danny Hissie, joining us from Toronto's financial sector. So as we can all see, we've got a great lineup for our panel portion of today's webinar, coming from a very diverse backgrounds and industries. So we're really all in for a treat today with these powerhouses joining us. We'll learn a little bit more about each and every one of them a little later in today's session as we get into the panel portion of the webinar. But first, before we dive into anything, I'd like to get into our land acknowledgement. I'd like to acknowledge that UBC's Vancouver Point Grey campus is situated on the traditional ancestral and ceded territory of the Musqueam people. I'd also like to acknowledge that you're joining us today from many places near and far and acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of those lands. Looking at the agenda today, the first portion of this webinar will be giving you an overview of the MBAN program, and then we'll be sure to dive into the panel portion where our alum will be asked a series of frequently asked questions, as well as questions that you may have for them about their career trajectories, COVID-19 impacts, and their work um, and how that's really impacted their work and how they use data on a day-to-day -day, um, within their operations, regardless of the industry and sector they're working with. So please feel free to type your Q&A in any kind of Q&A you have, whether it's for our alumni or anything admissions related, make sure you're typing it in the um, chat section of um, the Zoom chat box. And we will definitely be sure to address your questions during um, the end of today's uh, webinar. So whether it's for our alumni or anything admissions related, um, we'll def we're definitely here today to support you in addressing any of those questions. So let's dive right in and learn a little more about the Masters in Business Analytics program. The field of business analytics has really exploded over the past few years and more and more organizations are recognizing the need for this important skill set, especially in the face of uncertainty, like a pandemic, for example, and changing economies. The importance of business analytics continues to grow across industries, organizational departments, and internationally because it's a skill that makes individuals and companies more adaptive in the face of changing times. Given this, it's really no surprise that the popularity of our MBAN program continues to grow. Currently, UBC Sauter's MBAN program is ranked as the best in Western Canada, and it's the number two most popular postgraduate specialties master's program globally. This is really a one-of-a-kind program for anyone who wants to work with cutting-edge companies to interpret data, and use data to make effective business decisions and become an effective storyteller using data. And that's really so that you can help organizations make sound and data-driven decisions at the end of the day. So in just 12 months, you can earn a master's degree from a top tier internationally recognized university. The program is offered right here where I'm dialing in from, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. And Vancouver, besides being one of the most livable cities in the world, it's also currently known as Canada's fastest growing economy. And we're really thriving in a variety of different industries. Of course, tech 
and uh, entrepreneurship are amongst uh, the major ones, but we were also very much so thriving and growing in the field of natural resources, oil and gas, healthcare, manufacturing, retail, transportation, and, and much more. It's also home to a variety of consulting firms, Fortune 500 companies, and startups. So why the MBAN and why UBC in particular? When students ask me this question, there's a few key themes that come to mind. Well, first there's the engaging courses and curriculum, the great case studies that you get to participate in, the analytics consulting internship, but really it's the whole program it's how, and how it's focused around experiential learning and the, uh, the personalized career development resources that you get access to. And I'm kind of going to dive into uh, these sections uh, through, uh, in more detail throughout today's session. So here's a snapshot of the program journey. You'll see that there's a mix of more technical courses, but there's also some more business focused courses here. So you'll see that, yes, we've got a lot of business courses here, a lot of technical courses, but all the courses have within them the intersection of business and data science. So whether you're learning about data-driven marketing, forecasting and prediction, advanced predictive business analytics, pricing analytics, consulting practices, and project management. Essentially, you learn how to become an effective translator who can speak the languages of the business worlds, technology, and data, giving you a strong technical communications and storytelling background so that you can work with diverse teams and on diverse projects as well. You'll see here a, a blue line that runs throughout the entire program, the whole 12 months, and that's the career development programming. This runs throughout the entire year, which means that you're consistently receiving career readiness training where you're getting set up and ready for the job market. So whether that looks like building your own personal brand better or, or getting better at interviewing and, and receiving great interview prep, um, how to communicate with different stakeholders and give amazing presentations. The entire curriculum is designed to help you better launch your career. A big part of the program, like I said, is the experiential learning piece. And that comes through in a variety of different ways. So whether that's our, the case studies that you participate in, the analytics consulting internship, the hackathons, working with deal, real data, and real problems in real time, you also get the biggest exposure to this during your summer experience, which happens to be from May until August. That's the four month period where you'll be engaging in an internship project. So this is where classes stop and you'll either participate in an internship, an entrepreneurial project, or an industry project. So the internships, these are paid internships. So while you're working and applying the knowledge that you learned in the program, you're also getting the opportunity to make anywhere between $3,000 and $6,000. Um, most of these opportunities happen in the Vancouver area, which will allow you to essentially add a local company to your resume. But these opportunities um, can also be internationally. In a few cases, some of our students have gone and done their internships internationally. Um, but if you're more entrepreneurial minded, you can use these four months to foster a business idea with mentorship from our faculty and entrepreneurship resources. Um, and, and we do have extensive resources available on campus uh, for entrepreneurs. Here's a few examples of the analytics consulting internship that um, we were, were partnered with and our partnerships consistently grow. But to give you an insight into some of our, our projects that we focused on in the past is for instance, um, as a student, you could be interning with Canada Post and you might be working with Canada Post to help them determine, okay, how do I create more efficiencies or improve efficiency during really busy times like Christmas or major holidays? Or you might be supporting Boeing, Boeing uh, a major aviation business, in maximizing fuel efficiencies at different flight bases, such as takeoff, landing, or when you're coasting. 
The Business Career Center is probably one of the most valuable resources that you gain access to throughout the program. The level of support that you get as a student is really unprecedented. And I mean, starting day one, you get your own personal executive career coach, which will be assigned to you and where you can, you know, they, they're there to empower you and support you in making sure that you're reaching all your objectives. We offer this personalized career coaching and I can't emphasize how important it is for, for all of our students because you get a, a dedicated manager that's there to make sure that you're career ready, ready to network, apply um, for different roles and interview. So you'll, you'll go through mock interview prep workshops, you'll go through personal brand building classes, you'll gain access to key professional development resources, and you'll be put through training as well, and um, be given the opportunity to connect with a lot of alumni and take part in various mentorship opportunities. Um, so yes, in addition to getting great company info session resources and access to employers, Throughout the program, you're getting access to personal career development. So you essentially learn to identify what your key strengths are so that you can leverage those and also identify the areas in which you can continue to grow and improve and your, your learning journey can really be targeted towards that. So let's have a look at some of your fellow classmates. As you can see, they come from a range of different industries and backgrounds, just like you'll see um, in our panel session and throughout. Uh, and although, you know, work experience isn't a requirement for the program, the average work experience is about four years. And our post program success in employment is, is quite strong. We're at about 91%, which means that 91% of our alum are successfully employed um, within three months of graduation. In, in some years, we've had 70% of our class fully employed even before they graduated, which is a statistic that we're very proud of. And, you know, there's always a few that go off and pursue their entrepreneurial ventures. And like I said, if that's your, your wish, we do have a lot of designated resources for that as well. And as you can see here, um, when you're looking at employment sector, the, the, the range is, is, is quite broad. So um, our, our alumni, they're, they're going off and they're, and they're working in different roles such as business analyst, data scientist, technical analyst, technical project analyst, financial analyst, and the works. And as you can see, that's in a variety of different industries here. So looking at some of the career outcomes, uh, the majority of our alum do end up staying in Vancouver, primarily in, in British Columbia, and um, some go to other provinces, some go to Calgary, some go to Toronto, we support that. We do have networks and connections um, across the country. And there's always a few that decide to go internationally as well. And we also do support those um, decisions as well through our partnerships globally. Here are some of the companies that are hiring our MBANs. This is where a lot of our MBANs have landed. Some of these uh, logos might look familiar to you and you might be excited by some of these logos. And like I said, you can see that our alumni are going all over the place, whether it's consulting, um, communications, retail, banking, finance, um, the opportunities are, are pretty vast, which is great. And admissions requirements. At Sauter, we do have a very holistic evaluation process, which means that we look at the whole person when we're making any kind of assessment in admissions decisions. We look at your academic background, how you scored on your GMAT and your GRE, because that tells us whether you can keep up with the rigor of the program. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. This is a challenging program. It tends to attract people who are looking for that level, level of rigor and to be challenged. And, and we do need to do our due diligence to make sure that our students can keep up with that pace. It's an intense program, but it's also a very exciting and very much so rewarding program as well. You'll hear more about that from our alum shortly. Um, we 
Like I said earlier, we do not have a work experience requirement, but the average work experience is about four years, and it can be something that can add to your profile. We look at your references. We require two references, and they can be either academic or professional. We do prefer professional supervisory references. As part of your application, there's also going to be some essay questions. Those essay questions are going to help us understand you a little better. They're going to help us get a glimpse into your motivations for wanting to pursue the program and what your future goals are and how you feel the MBAN is aligned with that. You'll have some written essay questions as, one, as well as one video essay question. The video and essay is about 90 seconds and here we're not expecting a major production or for you to have some advanced video or editing skills. You can even go on YouTube or Vimeo and sample some of our essay questions on there and, and look at what some of our past applicants have done for some inspiration. So a lot of times people are just, you know, having a plain background behind them and answering the question. Really the motivation here is to get a feel for your personality, your fit, your communication style and your interpersonal skills. Uh, we want to get a glimpse into who you are. And so having said that, we're not looking for a Quentin Tarantino type production or a Spielberg type production. Um, and then another metric that we'll evaluate you on is if you studied at an academic institution where the primary language of instruction was not English, you will be required to take an English proficiency test like an IELTS or TOEFL or KALE, for instance. If you studied at an academic institution where you got your bachelor's or master's in English as a primary language, you will not be required to take the English proficiency test. If you tick off all these boxes, you would then get invited for a personal interview. So that's it for the admissions requirements. Now let's look at some of our deadlines. Our applications opened a few weeks ago, just early in September, September 9th was when our applications opened and our first deadline is the end of October. October 27th is when you want to um, aim to have your applications in and the benefit of applying early on in the admission cycle is really just giving yourself access and the opportunity to have access to more scholarship potential. So the sooner you apply the more scholarship potential you have. We do award scholarships year round, but the chances are higher earlier on in the cycle. And yeah, I just really wanna emphasize that, um, get in touch with us directly if you have any admissions related questions. If you need support with your application, we can make recommendations and guide you so that you can present your strongest application. We can be your biggest advocate in the admissions process. It doesn't cost anything to assess your, your preliminary candidacy. So we really encourage you to reach out. Our, our response rate or our decision making and our turnaround is, is rather quick. Uh, so we're here to support you. Make sure you leverage us as a resource. You can reach out to myself directly. My email address is on screen for you to maybe take a screen grab of and, and reach out anytime. Or you can definitely be in touch with our general line, mben at solder.ubc.ca. So thank you for listening to the MBAN portion of today's webinar. And now I'd like to turn things over to the very, the way more interesting part of today's webinar. <laughs> um, I'd like to now ask our panelists to please turn their videos on if they're on the line. I hope you're on the line at this time and start off by introducing yourselves. I'd like for you to first describe, you know, what you were doing before the program what you're doing now, and essentially what you've been doing since the program. How, uh, where, where have you landed? Let's kind of start in order. Let's start with, uh, with let's start with Mitch. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry, can hey, you Mitch. Hi, Mitch. There we go. So happy you could be okay. here today with us. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here as well. Um, so I'll just introduce myself and where I've landed off the Denver program. 
Yes, please. Okay, yes, so Mitch. Thank you. My name is uh, Mitch Narva. I was part of the class of 2019 of the MBAN program. And right after I finished the program, I got a full-time position at Shaw Communications in their headquarters at Calgary, Alberta, where I now work as an analyst for their business analytics team. Thank you so much, Mitch. Let's now hear from Tua. Oh, sure. Uh -huh. Thanks for having me, Natalie. Uh, so I'm Tua with a very long last name. And I'm originally from Thailand. So before this, I was a product manager. Then I came to do my MBA degree last year, just recently graduated. And I just accepted my full time position at, uh, as a data scientist at Tech Resources. Uh, this is my third week at the new job. So good to meet you, everyone. Thanks, Tua. Um, and next, Adnan, let's hear from you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Natalie. So um, hello everyone, I'm Adnan um, and I am from, I'm originally from India. Um, so post, uh, pre MBAN, I was working uh, back in India and like, I worked in two uh, data analytics firms there. And um, yeah, last year I came to, MBA, uh, to I came to Vancouver, uh, started with MBAN and I, I, I was actually part of, um, uh, part of uh, Providence Healthcare uh, in an internship. Um, and then I got my full-time offer from them um, uh, from uh, September 1st. So yeah, it's been a month now. Wonderful, congratulations on that promotion and that permanent role, and now that's really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear next from Krish. Hello everyone, I'm Krish. Uh, like Mitch, I graduated from the program in, uh, last year, 2019. Uh, I've been, I secured a full-time position after the program at a fintech uh, startup in Vancouver called Canlist as an equity research associate. And now recently just uh, I'm working as an analyst now. Prior to the program, I was uh, again working in finance and equity research, but it was a large financial uh, investment bank. Uh, and yeah, and now I work at a tech startup. Thanks so much, Krish. Great to have you with us today. And last but not least, dialing in from the future, <laughs> we've got Danny from yeah. Toronto. He's, yeah. uh, he's, it's great to have you logging in with us, Danny. Yeah. Uh, hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny. And before I'm Ben, I'll major in electronic engineering. And originally, I come from Taiwan. And and so for people who are thinking like they have a engineering degree, they have a science uh, degree, but they are not, not necessarily really like into that like engineering heavy career, then maybe I am the one that I can provide the relevant uh, tips or uh, guidance if you like. And um, so before graduate, I have secured data engineering positions at RBC. And then right before the lockdown, uh, I think, uh, so obviously promote me to a manager positions and I'm very happy working in here. Uh, and I would like to share more details and like how the, uh, RBC, uh, how data and it is play a pivotal role in our RBC. Yeah. Thanks so much, Danny. And thanks all for, thank you all for your introductions. Um, today, I'm gonna start off by asking you guys just a few questions. Some of the FAQs that we get some frequently asked questions that we get from people who are wanting to pick the brains of MBAN and assess, okay, was, is this gonna be the right fit for me and my background? One of the more popular questions we get is, what was the highlight of the program for you? Who wants to start off with that one? If you had to think of one highlight of the program for you, what would you say it was? Well, I would like to be the first one. Thanks, Annie. Okay. Uh, so I would say the highlight is the internship portion that we have. Um, so I have internship with the COE, the Center of Operational Excellence. And at that time, you were able to uh, go through a full cycle of consulting. Like you need to identify the problem and then collect the data and uh, work with the stakeholder to make sure they understand what you are saying. Because what I usually found that um, major, in, uh, major in the engineering area, sometimes you feel like uh, other people will understand the math. However, they want to understand what are the potential value. Um, and then you need to let them know like um, your model is uh, have some impact, has some potential 
in pets. They are not looking at like formula or something like that. They, you need to let them know like uh, rationally and maybe uh, visually, like how will you bring those value? So I think go through that full cycle really, um, think really uh, also help me to stand out in the, in the admission. Yeah, I think the main competitor we are facing is the math of computer science students. And so I think uh, MBAN program help us to articulate our values. And also, I will also want to stress the, the value of a business career center. Uh, they provide a very personalized approach that they help you to find your story, find your inner source. So I think that is a pretty impactful. Even for me, I'm still benefit from the BCG resources. That's great. Thank you, Danny. And yeah, that's a good point. Like the BCC resources that you get access to, they're not only during the program, they're lifelong. Once you're in the yeah. Once you're in the MBAN community and alumni network, you're, you're stuck with us for life. <laughs> um, Mitch, let's hear from you next. What was the highlight of the program for you? So I guess one of the biggest highlights for me was that together with one of my classmates, actually, I got selected to represent the MBAN program at a conference in Austin, Texas. So this was for the Institute of Operations Research and Management in Science. And Basically, we had we attended that conference in Austin, Texas, and we were able to go to different talks, meet a lot of really interesting people who are absolute paragons in their field, and it was a really great networking experience. And I really do want to emphasize what Danny said regarding the Business Career Center, because throughout the program, they actually give you techniques on how to be able to tell your story. They, you have networking opportunities. So all of that really helped the the practice that I needed before I went to that conference and had to network with all of these different people there. Amazing. Thanks for that, Mitch. Um, does anyone want to volunteer to go next? Yeah, I can go next. Great. Um, um, so uh, for me, definitely the, the biggest surprise was the BCC, um, the Career Center. Um, um, I was expecting what the what um, what courses um, uh, the professors or the faculty will be teaching us, or um, or uh, or the internship, how it will go forward. But um, the career center and how the personalized uh, career development works that was that was like really surprising and um, good. It, it was a good surprise um, and. Definitely, it helped me a lot because I come from India. I had no idea about how things work here in Canada, uh, how to approach uh, uh, for for applying uh, for for different positions. So that was like the most helpful uh, thing that happened during MBAN and how to um, actually strategize your uh, job search process. Fantastic! Thank you for that, Adnan. And Krish, was there anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, for me, I think um, from my cohort, I was one of the only people who um, did the SEMP program, which is like the strategy consulting mentorship program and um, where a lot of our Sauder alumni, they come uh, and then they train you in consulting methodology, how to practice uh, different cases. And that really positioned me well for interviews in the future because it taught me how to think in a super structured way and uh, just they taught you a lot of frameworks and how to approach problems and I, I found that to be really valuable. Thank you so much Krish and that's a good point the SCMP that Krish is referring to um, strategic consulting mentorship program it's really more or less like a boot camp for people who want to go into the consulting space so it's something that runs alongside the, the MBAM and the MBA, and really it gets you ready and um, seasoned enough to get in front of some of the major consulting firms out there like the Deloitte's, the KPMG's, and the PwC's of the world. So thanks for sharing that, Krish. And um, now I'd like to kind of pull on a few of you, and some of you talked about this during your introduction, so thank you so much for, for sharing that in advance. Um, but I'd like to hear a little bit from some of you about what your internship experience was like. So, Krish, what was your internship experience like? I actually got a full-time uh, 
just so because it, it wasn't mandatory for us to do the internship. So I just directly started working after we, we got done with classes. I actually didn't do an internship. That's right. Chris is uh, one of our more seasoned alumni and, and got lucky that way and uh, managed to get straight into the job market, which is fantastic to hear about. Um, Adnan, you kind of shared this with us um, earlier about how your internship turned into a full-time employment. Uh, congratulations on your one month of being a permanent, but how was that transition for you and um, how is it, how has your internship to full-time employment transition been like? Um, yeah, so um, it wasn't very easy uh, for sure because um, landing an internship at the time, I, so I got my internship in uh, the end of March um, and at that time the, the pandemic started. So it wasn't very easy to land one internship, uh, but um, I think I got I got lucky, and again there was um, there were a couple of offers uh, that I had at that time, but um, yeah, I, I chose to go with uh, Providence Healthcare because um, uh, healthcare was one of the um, do one of the areas I was looking to work in. Um, so it was it was kind of very different. Um, I, I was like this was the first time I was working here in Canada, so um, uh, very different on how the culture here is. Um, so it took me some time to understand that. Um, also, the healthcare system here is completely different uh, from back in India. So um, it's like, like the first one month was just about understanding the, the uh, organization's culture, um, understanding the data, uh, how, how things work here um, in, in Canada regarding healthcare. Um, and then uh, the next two months, I. Uh, uh, I was assigned a project, and um, I was I was working on uh, the patient data from uh, uh, from the different hospitals in Vancouver area. Yeah. Thanks so much, Adnan, for that. Uh, Danny, why don't you share your experience with us? Uh, sure. I think everyone have shared their uh, story. So I have one thing to add in the internship component. So uh, so I know maybe fifty percent of cohorts were doing a COE internship. And I will say that that is a great time that you can finally get more understand each people's story. Because we, we don't just learn from our professor, our faculty, but uh, we also need to um, know that um, the res resources also from our peers. So because I, I believe that um, most of the, uh, alumni in this panel will all agree that we have a crazy, crazy and bank program. We have a crazy one year program. And, Sometimes you just kill one assignment over one assignment. And then I think in a COE, that is a time that you can truly kind of slow down a bit and just learn, um, just know about that you, your classmates as a person, as an individual. And I see that, um, that um, this does have a cultural impact. Like, because I feel like when they're doing the interview, they want to see that you are very personable. Like they want to see you or get along with the people uh, around you because at the end of the day, they um the hiring manager they are looking for someone not just smart but someone who they easily work with, someone and they are very, very interesting to work with. So I feel that like, um because I also like that because um at the end of the industry everyone wants to uh, secure the full time position. So I think that is a good time that everyone can work together and like do a monk interview and. Like rank, rank, uh, rank up your program uh, experience. Yeah, so don't forget the human elements. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, the next question I'd like to ask is why did you decide to pursue a path in business analytics or analytics in general? What was it for you? Let's hear from Tua on that one. Okay, sure thing. Well, I mean, uh, that's actually two reasons. Uh, the first thing is, actually, you know that data scientist has been voted the sexiest job of the 21st century by the Harvard Business Review, although I'm sure some of you guys disagree, but uh, that's okay. But I think the main reason is it just, that's a bit of truth in that statement as well, because, you know, with the whole trends with data science and everything, it's actually a very, very good time to be jumping on this analytics train. So I was 
just a bit of a context before I'm coming here, I was a product manager. So I was the person who bridged between the, the, the client and the data scientist. And back then, I, I was a bit jealous of them because I, because I look at data scientists and they are actually so, yeah, they're very technical and they actually speak like an expert. As a product manager, I only know so part of what they know. I just communicate what they know to the clients and back and forth. I was like, huh, maybe it's a good time for me to get this you know, expertise in modeling and machine learning and deep learning, and which is why I decided to come to Envan. And I came here with zero skill and knowledge in coding. And well, it actually, it took about a year, but uh, I think I'm quite happy where I, where I am now. And, and but, but of course, there's still a lot more to learn with, you know, there's a, Data science is a growing field, so there's a lot more to learn. Once you get into the field, you have to keep learning just to not fall behind. But I mean, if you enjoy learning, that's a good experience for you to be in. Thanks so much, Tiwa. And what was it for you, Mitch? Why did you decide to pursue a path in analytics? Okay, so before I actually went into the MBAN program, my background is actually in biology. So I work in different laboratories as um, uh, a researcher, basically. So I spent a lot of time in the laboratory and I asked myself one day, what do I need to do to become a better scientist? And I realized that there was really a lack of people who were formally trained in statistics and mathematics and understanding how data works. So I asked some professors, a professor recommended for me to go to graduate school and another professor recommended for me to look into the field of analytics. So I'll learn what I want to learn but to help me spread out my wings a bit more, I'll also learn a couple of different topics that I would have never considered before. And after that, I basically read through what is available out there in the field, got really interested, and that basically led to um, me completing the MN program. Thanks so much for that one, Mitch. And what was it for you, Krish? Why did you decide to pursue a path in analytics? Yeah, for me, I think most of my experience was in finance and uh, finance is kind of like an old industry with not, with not a lot of innovation. And what I was seeing, uh, especially in uh, investment uh, equity research was that um, some of like there was a, a particular analyst who used to cover mining companies and he started using a lot of analytics. So he was using uh, data visualizations like Tableau. Uh, he was using other tools like Python to do some analysis of basic regression. And he started outperforming the other, you can say, sector analysts and was providing better investment ideas. So I, I thought, okay, if I want to become a better investment professional in the future, it is a skill set I need to have. And I, I looked at it from that lens. Uh, that's kind of changed now that I did the program and I'm working at a, a fintech organization. But when I joined the program, that was more the inspiration was to become a better investment professional and utilize analytics to do that. Thanks so much, Krish. And now I'm getting a lot of questions from our audience. And I think some of these questions you guys would be great to answer. Our audience is wondering what was the type of experience you had with coding and programming before the course? So what was your experience? and your exposure? Because we've got some people who are looking to apply who don't really necessarily have a background in programming and coding. And what was your guys' experience with that? Who would like to volunteer their insights there? I can go for this one. Uh, I actually touched on it for a bit, but uh, I, my experience with coding before the program was very limited. I used, well, I used R for a bit before the program. I had zero experience with Python. Uh, the good thing with MBAN is that they actually build your skill with Python from the ground up. They won't assume that you already know Python, but knowing Python is definitely an advantage in the program because this program moves at lightning pace. So you'll be put into an introductory class in Python for about eight weeks. And after that, they expect you to be able to you know, start doing projects in Python. So if you start feeling you fall behind, it's important that you ask for help in this program because there'll be no waiting, there'll be no stopping. You just need to catch up. So knowing Python would help, not necessarily though, but I would still recommend that you 
maybe there's a lot of online courses nowadays for Python. So just take a look just to know some basics, some basics and that would be really, really helpful during the program. Thanks, Tua. Does anyone else have any insights on that, on what were your kind of programming and coding skills before the start of the program and what kind of advice would you give on that? I can add on to that. So for me, before the MPAN program, I took one class in Python a couple of years before, so I forgot most of it, basically, no practice. <laughs> but I, what I do want to emphasize to everybody is that if you do not have the programming experience, so don't worry. As Tua said, we will teach you um, the fundamentals of it all. And you get so much practice throughout the program that by the time you finish, that you will have a pretty good grasp of the programming languages that you do use pretty well. Thanks so much for that one, Mitch. And I've got a great question here from Andre. The question reads, now that you're graduated, what would be one, advice, one piece of advice that you have received from alumni before you start the program? So I think, I'll, I'll paraphrase it. <laughs> um, what's a piece of advice that you'd give to a newcomer into the program? Well, I can add. So I really, um, I think, uh, at the first day I landed in Vancouver, the first thing I do is to just put my luggage at the dormitory and then I will straight go to the BCC to meet the career manager at that time. And so I will say like, for sure, I need to get in touch with the BCC because the BCC is kind of like your second family, your second home, like your home, home in Canada because I believe there are so many international students and we don't have friends, we don't have rel relatives and so we're just build our network from the ground up. And I think BCC is the first way that can get you started. And so you just need to, uh, because uh, <clears throat> you will for sure everyone like go through many failures. So you need to have a um, safety net that you can support you. So I will say that the that safety net is very important for your growth. But if you treat each failure as a growth opportunities, then you will keep seeking those failure because you understand that those failure will fuel your future success. Like, uh, I think I've, when I've received so many rejection emails, uh, I will say that I, will, I only need to get one yes. So I think that is a, a really important mindset for me to keep going on, receive rejection email and keep going on, keep going on. So I will say like, um, aside from the technical skill set, I believe um, once uh, UBC give you the admission data, they will trust you, you can grab um, those technical skills. So I will also need to uh, uh, hope everyone understand the importance of the EQ. I think I also, I would also like to say that is a huge differential point that I want to choose uh, solder a UBC program over other programs because um, interesting, none of those business and this program uh, focus on the EQ. And however, the EQ is actually the essential part of your career uh, journey. Thanks so much, Danny. Um, Krish, what about for you? What kind of advice would you, I guess, do you wish someone had given you and now that you would want to pass on to a newcomer into the MBAM? Yeah, I think I would actually, I would reiterate what Danny said about the BCC. Uh, essentially because uh, when you're in Canada and, and kind of the timelines of the program are in such that they tell you about what the opportunities are and considering it's a one-year program and there are some industries that uh, recruit in a very structured way maybe one year before so the moment you actually come into the program is when some of the consulting firms and, and the financial services firms start recruiting so um, you need to be prepared and I think uh, the BCC is an absolutely great resource for that. Secondly, I would also encourage everyone to utilize whatever resources Sorda has. There's a ton of resources. And uh, I think the most you can utilize in, in one year would be amazing. I, I know I did the SCMP and um, I had my final exam on fr uh, Friday. And then I had like a SCMP mock on like Saturday and had to like juggle between the two. So also managing your time um, and managing conflict, et cetera, because such, such a fast paced program, um, just come with a growth and learning mindset and you'll, you'll, you'll do really well. Thank you so much, Krish. 
What would you guys say was the biggest challenge in the program for you? What was kind of the thing that you would say you struggled with most? What would you say it was for you, um, Mitch? Yeah. Oh, sorry, did we have a bullet? Oh, no, that's fine. I can go next. Go ahead. Okay, okay. We'll, hear from, we'll hear from Mitch first and then we'll go to Adnan. Okay, sure. Um, I'm actually from Vancouver. So like a lot of domestic students, we usually have very long commute time. So for me, I actually live two hours from UBC. And that was the biggest challenge because part of the program really is that there's a lot of group work that you have to do. And sometimes that they can run late into the night. So that was one of the biggest challenges that you have a lot of projects. They really jam pack a lot of things within those few months for you to learn a lot of things. So uh, commute time was the biggest challenge, but also the amount of group work and things that you have to learn within a short amount of time. Thanks for that, Mitch. How about, what was it for you, Adnan? Um, so for me, it was basically balancing out everything uh, because at, at times during the program, there might be a lot of things that are going on um, at, at the same time. Uh, there might be assignments, there might be some information sessions, you might be networking with someone. Um, there are uh, lots of competitions that happen too, uh, which are... Uh, which which is like conducted by Sauder or um, or different organizations in in Canada. So uh, there's a lot of things that keeps keeps on going and um, balancing everything out. You you don't want because it's a one year program and also because there are so many things uh, that Sauder has to offer. Uh, you feel like I don't want to miss out on something. So um, yeah. So I mean, like you need to. Uh, make sure that you don't miss out on assignments or you uh, don't miss out on networking opportunities because, and, and taking out time for everything. So that was one of the things for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Adnan. And what would you say it was for you, Danny? Mm, challenges. Uh, I think it's the career. Uh, that would, I think, uh, start from the end, right? If, if everyone, I'm for sure everyone coming to study Sauder is not just for a degree. Everyone wants to like, land a job in Canada and maybe live here permanently. So I would say like the how to get immersed to the Canadian culture uh, because I come from Asian culture and we used to like uh, work hard, work very hard, but we rarely play hard. We, we rarely play and we just work, work, work. But I think um, study disorder, they also like the uh, busy also will also uh, uh, organize some fun events and so just to keep you uh, have a work life balance. So, um, everyone's working hard, and but for sure, if you have chance opportunity to play hard, do so. And and also, you have a whole family or whole and family. And, and uh, so I really appreciate that uh, the student society also organized some fun events. So overall speaking, I would say like uh, MBAN is a life-changing journey. It's not just about academics, but you will, uh, it will also change uh, how you live your life, how to live a, like a more Canadian lifestyle. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for your time, panelists. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedules. Our, our panelists are, are very busy working professionals, so it's it's great to have you guys in there and shed these insights um, for people looking at the MBAN. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, for the next portion of this webinar, um, we will be having admissions related questions and I'll be looking at the chat box to address any admissions related questions that we have. So uh, from here on out, our, our questions will be very much so um, focused on admissions. So thank you so much panelists for your time. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. One of the questions we're getting on about admissions here is, is there a plan for the 2021 program to be in person? Have, has there been a consideration for the degree to be virtual? Now this year, due to the pandemic, we had shifted our start date to October 2020. Our program this year 
we will be commencing online. Periods one and two will be online. Our hope is to transition to in-person or hybrid programming as of March 2021. Um, so that's for, for this cohort. Now we're looking at the, you know, the, the entry for the applications that are open um, as of two weeks ago. That will be commencing at the end of August. In our program is, we are intending to go ahead with um, continuing in classroom face-to-face -face programming. So as of right now, um, that is our plan and, and our hope. The next question we have here is about the internship. So the internship typically takes two forms. Um, first, there's a traditional internship opportunity wherein our, our students go into a, a Vancouver-based firm. I mean, the strong majority of the opportunities are Vancouver-based. Um, in the past, some of our students have done it in Toronto and Calgary and um, overseas as well. But a strong majority of our opportunities are um, right here, based locally. And um, that's really your opportunity to showcase everything you've learned in the program in a real life, working context under the supervision of an expert in that field. So that's the traditional internship route. The second route is working at the COE. The COE stands for Center of Operational Excellence. The COE is UBC's very own consultancy firm. It's amongst the top 20 um, consulting and research facilities in North America. And there you would be working on projects that the COE gets. So the COE gets projects from Fortune 500 companies all the time. So the Amazons of the world, the Microsofts of the world. And so you're still working directly with clients, liaising directly with clients under the supervision of a professor or a top researcher. The key differentiator between the two opportunities, I'd say, is really the setting the experience and the exposure to the world of business analytics is very similar. Um, and I, I guess the, the key difference there is, is the setting. One's on campus, whereas one's in a Vancouver-based firm. And I'd say the opportunity, which one you want to take advantage of, really just depends on what your preference is. Great. Um, so this is more of like an immigration question that I'm getting here. Um, but it's a question around eligibility to work beyond the program in Vancouver. To address that question, um, so students who complete this 12-month program, the MBAN, about three months before you graduate, you're eligible to apply for the PGWP, the Postgraduate Work Permit. This enables you to, because it's a highly specialized area in a high-in-demand skill set that we um, you know, we're, we're really looking for business analysts in, in Canada right now. Um, you know, our success rate for, for securing the PGWP has been quite strong. To my knowledge, it's been at about 99% success rate. Um, so this enables you to stay and work in Canada anywhere between one and three years. And um, once you're in Canada for three years, you're eligible for, to apply for PR, permanent residency. So yes, um, securing postgraduate work permit is, is generally a quite an attractive option um, for our students that, that a lot of our students end up leveraging so that they can you know, stay here and leverage their skills right here in Vancouver. Uh, we have some questions here um, around uh, previous knowledge of mathematics, computer science, and, and uh, statistics in order to be successful in the program as well as coding and programming knowledge. So our alumni touched a little bit on this, but really our program is intended for a, a diverse group. You'll see that people who have taken the MBAN program have come from a very diverse and eclectic background, and we feel that that's what makes the collegiate experience that much more rich and valuable. So you've got people with psychology backgrounds, human resources, forestry, engineering, business, computer science, all coming into the cohort and that speaks to how diverse and applicable um, the world of business analytics is um, to different industries and different professions. So we're not 
necessarily having a preference for one background over another. However, we do look at how you did it in quantitative courses such as stats, math, algebra, and calculus. How you did in these courses, tell us a little bit about your quantitative abilities and your ability to keep up with the more quantitative concepts in the program. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, another thing is if you don't have any kind of programming knowledge or um, exposure to any kind of programming languages, that's okay. Um, nowadays, we're really lucky to have so many online resources. So if you wanted to gain some kind of elementary or very introductory exposure to programming languages such as Python or R, these are things that could help elevate and enhance your application. Um, we're not expecting a very advanced level in these areas before you apply. Even if you have a very basic understanding of Python or R through online courses such as Coursera, um, this is something that can help kind of elevate your application if you don't have a, a technical background. Um, I have some questions around students who have a lower GPA and are concerned about this. Um, what kind of advice would I offer in this case? Like I said, we do have a very holistic evaluation process. We look at the whole person and the whole picture when we're making any kind of considerations, recommendations on an application. Now, how you did in your undergraduate GPA, that's a thing of the past. Unfortunately, you can't really control that. But what you can do is work really hard and get a really good score on your GMAT or your GRE as an indication to us that, you know, when push comes to shove, you can get those grades and, and show us your quantitative and your verbal aptitude. Now, for those standardized tests, such as the GRE or the GMAT, we do look at your overall score. However, we will zoom in on how you did on the verbal and the quantitative sections. We'd like to see an individual who scores within or above the 50th percentile in both those areas. So a minimum requirement for the GMAT, for instance, is 550 for an overall score, and a competitive score is about 650. For the GRE, minimum requirement is about 310. Competitive is closer to 320. Let's look at some of the other questions we have on here. So um, yeah, we're, we're, I'm getting a lot of questions on, on concerns around having a technical background or not having a computer science background. Like I said, this isn't a concern. Um, typically for all of our students who do get admitted into the program, a lot, they get granted their campus-wide login and along with their campus-wide login, they're given access to a lot of preparatory resources as well. So you can use the months leading up to the program to brush up on your technical skills or your business skills to ensure that you're at a level where you feel comfortable and able to keep up with the pace of the program. I'm getting some great questions on scholarships. So with regards to scholarships, we have different types of scholarships atta attached to different deadlines. You'll notice on our website, in our, on our scholarship page, that we have numerous scholarships attached to our October 27th deadline. We have a new series of scholarships as well that are going to be attached to our January, March, and April deadlines. We do offer scholarships year-round for the admission cycle about 40 to 45 percent of our class does end up earning a scholarship of, of some form or some shape or size. Typically when we're talking about scholarships there's two avenues to explore um, and you can see that on our scholarship page on our website. Uh, first there's the internal opportunities and for the internal opportunities you're automatically considered for those. Once you apply um, you're automatically considered for the internal scholarships based on merits and we'll assess 
how effectively you meet our criteria and be awarded by the admissions committee an internal scholarship. Now there's also various external scholarships that we advertise and show on our website. Our external scholarships um, are, are coming from kind of external stakeholders and you can apply for as many as the ones that you're eligible for and based on their own unique criteria. So all of those scholarships are, are specific and if you feel like you meet their criteria and their requirements, great. Um, apply to as many as the ones that you see that you're eligible for uh, based on, um, on their criteria. And the communication on those scholarships would be happening um, from, directly from those um, scholarship providers. I have one last question that I'll address, and it's around GMAT and GRE waivers. With regards to the GMAT and GRE waivers, um, the, this is something that we have implemented um, due to COVID. And uh, so I would invite you all, if you're intrigued in learning more about the GMAT or GRE requirements, this is still a requirement for the program. However, in some cases, if you need a particular type of academic background, we invite you to self-assess. If you do meet the criteria, along with you submitting your application, you can also submit an intent to apply for this waiver. Your request will be reviewed within seven to 10 days. And if you are successful for the GMAT or GRE waiver, great, you'll be moved to the next stage of the application process. If not, your application will be placed on hold until we do get your GRE or GMAT results. So I encourage you to go to the MBAN page, go into the admissions section and look for the GRE GMAT waiver instructions there, self-assess, and um, you can definitely submit your uh, letter of intent to apply for the GRE GMAT waiver and await a, a response from us within seven to 10 days. Thank you guys so much for logging in today. I hope you found the information in this session useful. Please make sure to reach out to me directly or to our direct NBAN line for any additional questions you have about our program. I really look forward to seeing your applications come through for our first deadline of October 27th. Thank you, and until the next time.